Today we gather to mark the 35th anniversary of the deaths of IRA volunteers Maria Farrell, Sean Savage and Dan McCann, murdered in Gibraltar as part of Thatcher's shoot to kill policy. Volunteer Kevin McCracken shot and killed on active service by British Army in Turf Lodge. John Murray, Thomas McAuleen and volunteer Kevy McBrady killed in defence of their people when loyalist Michael Stone attacked mourners as our community buried our patriot dead. We stand today to remember and to rededicate ourselves to achieving the, the republic they fought and died for. I want to extend the warmest of welcomes and express solidarity on behalf of everyone gathered here today to the families of Maria, Dan, Sean, Kevin, Kevin, Thomas and John. As a young woman, I am inspired by our comrades and as a new generation of young Irish Republicans step forward, we take up the baton and we do so in the full knowledge that we are indeed standing on the shoulders of giants, grateful for the sacrifices of those who came before us. Our main speaker today is Maria Farrell, TD, the namesake and niece of IRA volunteer Maria Farrell. Maria is a trailblazing representative for Sinn Féin in Galway, West, and I'm delighted to welcome her to West Belfast today. As an Irish Republican, it is an incredible honour to speak at the graveside of our patriot dead at the Republican plot here in Milltown Cemetery. And I do so for the first time as a Sinn Féin TD. And I am very conscious that if it weren't for the influence of many of you here today, as well as the impact that the events we commemorate today had on my family, that I would not be with you in this capacity. And in fact, I can say that without a shadow of a doubt that the influence of our friend Bobby's story had on me with his encouragement, his incredible political mind and his amazing ability to instill self-confidence in everyone he spoke to is what has me here today. Of course, as we all know, Bobby would have said, I'm sure you could have done it without me. But every single time that I am in Belfast, I think of Bobby. And every single time that I stand up in Dáil and I do so as a proud Galwegian, proud of the community that I come from and the people that I represent. But equally, I do, do so with the knowledge of where my family comes from. And I cannot wait until the day that our Shanador Nilo Donnelly is joined by other Belfast Sinn Féin representatives when we achieve a united Ireland. So as Marie Farrell TD, I am incredibly proud to be here at the graveside of Oglock Mairead Farrell. Agus a chorge thomuj bali he li keilin sa anyo kon comara yna er ogli da mccann Sean Savage, Quivin McBrody, Kevin McCracken agus Mairead Farrell, chumal a birch ear croiga, John Murray agus Thomas McArlain. And we gather with their families and their friends and our families brought together and linked together forever as a result of those terrible 10 days in March 1988. And I just want to thank Belfast Sinn Féin and the wider Republican family here in Belfast, as well as the Felons for hosting a lovely event this morning um, that brought our families together again. But if we look at the history of Ireland, there is no question but that Gibraltar was a se seismic event which had a huge impact on the history of our country. And that impact was not just felt by the people of Belfast. The killing of Mairead, Dan and Sean was felt by so many of the people of Ireland. And that solidarity from among the wider population and the wider community was clear from the huge outpouring of grief across the island, which saw thousands of people who gathered in the streets along the route as the three bodies of our comrades were brought from Dublin to Belfast. And I'm all too well aware of the very long journey home from Gibraltar, which added to the pain and trauma of the people who love them. Dan, 
Mairead and Sean were widely respected by their friends, their families and their community, as well as much further afield. Sean, of course, was only in his early 20s, but was already well respected. The war had come to his door at a very young age. Dan and Mairead, who were already in their 30s, were already veterans of the struggle. But Mairead had spent most of her 20s in jail, and although I never had the opportunity to meet my aunt, seeing the bond that the women who were in Armagh with her share to this day gives me a sense of the person that she was and hearing of the funny times that they shared brings me great joy. But of course, there were very difficult times too. And I think of the time she spent on hunger strike with Mary Doyle and Mary Nugent. And in a letter on the 18th of December, 1980, while she was on hunger strike, she wrote, I wasn't in too good a form yesterday morning. Well, it's not that I was in bad form. It's just in the, in the mornings now, I always feel kind of sick. The period of grief and trauma after the killings in Gibraltar is something which for me, who's not alive at the time, is unimaginable. But the attempt to demonize the community of West Belfast, of course, failed. And of course, it could never have succeeded. It would never succeed as a result of the strength, character, and resilience of the people of Belfast, which I know to be true to this day. But of course, only a few short days later, as the people of Belfast waited on the return of Sean, Dan and Mairead, Ogloch Kevin McCracken, again in his early 30s, a former blanket man from Turf Lodge, was shot dead by the British Army. Another incredible loss. And at that time, we also had the tragic loss of the two Brendans, Brendan Moley and Brendan Burns in South Armagh, and the attack on their funeral had an immense impact on their families and their community. Bloody Sunday, the Ballymurphy massacre and the use of sectarian killer gangs were the old British tactic of collective punishment. And let us be clear, the attack on the funeral of our loved ones on the 16th of March 1988 was not a random sectarian killer's act. This was British collusion in action. And as many of you will recall, up until then, funerals were swamped by the massed forces of the RUC and British Army. But on, this, on that 16th of March, there was not an RUC man or a British soldier in sight. And we now know too where those weapons used against the mourners came from. Be in no doubt, though these continue to be the common tools of empire. The pseudo gangs and collective punishment are part of the arsenal of the oppressors. And that is why the truth must come out. And that is why the government's, the British government's legacy bill must be stopped. And it is at here at this point that I wish to pro offer my profound sympathy to the families of the cr three courageous young men, Thomas McElaine, Ogloch Quivin McGrawdy and John Murray who lost their lives defending our community. The loved ones of those brave hearts have suffered as much, if not more, than the families of the Gibraltar Three. The sacrifice that Queen Thomas and John made for their community must never be forgotten. I am mindful of the fact that at Queen's funeral, two British soldiers were killed, and for us there is no hierarchy of victims, and we are mindful that their families are also grieving. That month in 1988 is a terrible time that must never be repeated. And because of Republican leaders and our community who stood in the graveyard, these, those days will never happen again and our country is in a very different place. But on a hopeful note, we are part of a party that is growing. A party that is offering hope and the prospect of a better future for all the people of Ireland because the times are changing and it is a time of great opportunity opportunities that were not open to those who came before us a new and a united Ireland is possible and it is our responsibility every single one of us who are united Irelanders to realize the opportunity that is before us we must not be complacent we must seize the opportunity before us and together we can reimagine the kind of society that we want to live in. We now have two incredible women leading us from the front 
who want to deliver this change and realise the opportunity for all the people of Ireland. And we in Sinn Féin won't rest until we all have the Ireland that we deserve. An Ireland that is focused on our opportunities, our well-being, our future and our hope. And until we can all feel that hope, until we all know that there is space for every single one of us here with opportunities to build a life and look to the future. And I am proud to be part of a party that is boldly reaching for that future because together we can do all of this. But in this week, the week of International Women's Day, as I remember the women in my family, I also wish to pay tribute to two unconquerable women. Reed O'Hare, who we buried this week, was a force to be reckoned with. And in her, in her last conversation, she actually told me that she, like Mairead, went to Rathmore Grammar School. And I think we can all say, and Kleena did as well, that the, that school has a lot to answer for. But Carmen Proetta, was the woman who became part of all our lives when she witnessed the British government's shoot to kill policy in its most blatant form. Carmen, despite having no links to Ireland, and no matter the consequence, spoke truth to power. And for that, we will always be grateful. Gurmina Mahagut a Carmen. <laughs> Carmen and Rita showed strength of character and of mind and we continue to be inspired by them and we must follow their lead because as we continue to build towards Irish unity we must remember that there will be challenges ahead but that working together we can and will achieve a united Ireland that will deliver for all. So on conclusion to quote my auntie Mairead for the first time your mind's your strongest weapon, and that's how we always counteract whatever they do. Because they can't control our minds. They can't get inside them. And that is their failure. Bury me